Hi, and welcome to the third little video on the subject of simultaneous equations or systems of equations. Let's have a look at this one. We're getting a little bit more tricky now. Um, if we add or subtract those two equations, we're not going to get anywhere. We're not going to simplify them because we won't be eliminating. That's adding the two, that's subtracting the bottom from the top, and that's subtracting at the top from the bottom. But it's not simplifying because it's not eliminating either the x's or the y's. So what do we do about this situation? Well, one thing we haven't really investigated fully is the possibility of multiplying through the equations. And in fact, if I multiply the top equation, say by 9, that equation is still true. And if I multiply it by 5, say, still true. But it, neither of those help us. But what happens if I multiply it through by 2? Ah, that really does help us. Because now when we add the two equations, we've got something we can continue with. Because we can now um, divide that lot by uh, 13 and continue on to a solution. Let's run through that again. By multiplying the top by 2, I can eliminate the x's by adding so it's a two-stage process to get to the situation where I can then divide through by 13 uh, to get the final solution. Now let's take a look at a second example. Um, we've got various ways we can go with this one. It's quite a, quite a lot of possibilities here. I hope you can see that if we multiply the top equation by 3, then we're going to get to the situation where we can add the two uh, x terms together to eliminate them. And we've got a situation where we can now divide through by 20 to find out our y value and continue on to the end. What else can we do? Well, two fours are eight. We can eliminate the y's this time as well. Or instead, by multiplying the top by two, and now we can subtract the two equations. Let's take the bottom away from the top. Now, if we divide through by negative 15 by minus 15, well, it's, it's fairly obviously going to be 0. So we've got our total final solution, 0, 6, for x and y. Let's try uh, two different approaches to this next question. Uh, I hope you can see that if we multi multiply the bottom equation, second equation, by 2, now we can subtract uh, and continue that way. It doesn't matter which way we subtract. Should we do it uh, this way, bottom from top? Yes. And now dividing through by 19 gives us our y value, which we can substitute uh, to get our x value and our final solution. What's another way of doing that? Well, I hope you can see if instead of multiplying this bottom equation by 2, we multiply it by negative 2. We're now into a situation where we can add the two equations to eliminate the x. So let's do that. And we actually come up to the sort of same, uh, more or less the same point as we did before. And we carry on to the, the same solution as before. But we've got a choice of, let's run through that again, uh, choice of multiplying by 2 and subtracting, or multiplying by minus 2, negative 2, and adding. It's up to you. It's going to lead to the same solution either way. Now this next example is a bit tricky. Uh, notice that, that we can't multiply the top by anything to, to get the same on the bottom and, and, and continue that way, nor can we multiply the bottom by anything uh, which gives us something similar to the top. So we can't proceed as we did in the previous examples in this video. However, we can progress if we multiply both equations. And I'm going to show you two different ways of doing that. First of all, I'm going to try and make the y's have the same value in front of them. Forget about the pluses and the minuses for the time being. But if I multiply the top equation by 4, got it minus 12y there. So if I can multiply the bottom equation by 3, that gives us a plus 12y. Now when we add the two equations, we get to something which we can continue with, uh, giving us our x value 2 and leading on to our y, y value, which is minus 7 or negative 7. Now, 
let's start that again and see if there's another way of doing it. Well, yes, we can do something similar to eliminate the x's. I hope you can see that if we multiply the top equation by 7, with 28 x's there, we can get we can get minus 28 x's on the bottom if we multiply the bottom equation by 4. Now adding is going to eliminate the x's and leave us uh, with our fairly simple equation to find y, dividing through by minus 5 uh, to get the x value, the y value and then the x value. Here's another example where we're going to have to multiply both equations uh, to get uh, to make some progress. Now, um, should we start looking at the x's? You've got a minus 2 and a minus 3. What we're looking for really is the smallest number uh, that 2 and 3 go into. In other words, the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3. And that's 6. So to get to 6 on the top, we have to multiply by 3. And to get to 6 on the bottom, we have to multiply by 2. Now, well, look, we've got negative 6 in both places. We'll get rid of that by subtracting. Once again, it doesn't really matter which way round we subtract. Let's take the top away from the bottom this time. And we've got a fairly simple equation, which we can divide through by 15 to get y, and then leads on to x in the usual way. Let's start the same question again. We can do that by uh, multiplying, eliminating the y's this time, multiplying the y's by 3 to make minus 21. And if we multiply the bottom equation by 7, we'll also get a minus 21. And once again, this leads to a subtraction. Once again, it doesn't matter which way. Let's do it this way, and we divide through this time by minus 15 to progress to our solution. Same solution, of course, because it's the same question. Now, there's another way of doing it. Uh, it, it sort of kind of mixes up the sort of things we've been doing before. If we multiply the top by 3 here, but multiply the bottom by negative 7, minus 7, we get to the situation where we've got same number but different sign in front of them, so we can eliminate the y's this time by adding. And once again, a fairly similar sort of situation from here to the end. So we can add or subtract depending on what we multiply through by. If we end up with the same sign in front of the same number, then we have to subtract. But if we end up with a different sign in front of the same number, then we can proceed by adding the two equations together. Now, these examples you've been looking at are all examples of simple linear simultaneous equations, where there's just an x term, a y term, and a number term in each of the two equations. There's no x squareds or xy's or anything complicated, just an x term or y squared equal some number term. Some number term. Now, uh, when you have to multiply both the equations, that represents what is usually the most complicated uh, of these types of equations. So once you can get the idea of multiplying both equations so that you can eliminate either the x's or the y's, then effectively you've mastered this topic. Let's have a look at this one. Hope you can see if you multiply the top by 7, and the bottom by 2, we get two negative 14s in those positions. And so we should now uh, subtract. Uh, we've got a fairly straightforward thing. I don't know how many people know their 57 times table. But in fact, this is 8 57s. And so y is 8, x is negative 7. And we could have got the same way by eliminating uh, the y's by multiplying the top by 4 the bottom by 7 this time, and now subtracting, no, forgive me, by adding the 2, we can eliminate the y's. And this time if we divide through by minus 57, once again, we'll get our x value leading on to our y value. Now, as I say, these are the most complicated of the things you're most likely to meet. There is one warning, though. This is all made with the Waldemass applet at waldemass.com on simultaneous equations. I've written it deliberately so that uh, the answer is always a whole number, positive or negative. 
However, in the real world, the answer is quite frequently a fraction. Uh, either the x or the y or both is a fraction. So be aware of that when you get questions, there might be some fractions involved. But all of the ones on this applet uh, will give you whole number solutions, and you'll just learn the process of, of how to do these equations by trying out there. Uh, basically, this technique comes with a bit of practice, so I do urge you to go to waldemass.com and play around with this applet.